one, meaning one who don't have, who don't walk in lawlessness and does not rebel. You just go, why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I say? You say I am Lord, but you don't care. You got that is lawlessness. Then don't call me Lord. You're doing your own thing. I tell you, I'm afraid of the torch, the torch land. I know when people, those that go into the hyenas, rams, they don't come back in one. They're lucky if they make it back. You know, there's a saying, they say with drug dealers and things. If you go into Mexico as a drug dealer, they say you don't come back, you just disappear. But that's what happened when you went to the parts land. But if God extend mercy, you don't make it what? Out. Like <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> or you don't come out the same. Yeah. Every so often someone goes in, and when they come out, you're like, something is, there are many things gone. There's so many things come off of you that you just, only God can help you now. Mm. Too many things have been extracted. Nothing has been added. Amen? But God, amen, likes to add. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible said, amen? You know that he appeared in visible form and became man to take away upon himself sins. This is why he came to take away all the sins. And in him there is no sin. Amen? Essentially forever. So in him, the tendency to want to miss the mark and want it to be lawless and rebellious is not in him. This is why Jesus said, I am your righteousness. I am your salvation. I am your righteousness. I am your peace. I am your wisdom. I am your justification. Because you got in me, none of those craziness exists. This is why you got, the life you're going to have to live is my life. Are you listening to me? He goes, if you have a righteousness and it's not me, you shall be lawless and rebel. If you have a wisdom and it's not me, you shall become high minded. If you have a righteousness and it's not me or mine, you shall do unrighteous things. You shall end up in the parchment. So make sure you take heed that the righteousness that you have, it is Christ. That the love that you have, it is Christ. That the faith that you have, it is Christ. Amen. That the mercy that you have, it is Christ. Hallelujah. That the life that you're living is Christ. Hallelujah. Take it. That life stays in the city that make God glad. That life stays where the stream, the river flow. Amen. And where God is in the midst. Amen. And where he's helping her morning by. As soon as dawn break, he's like, time to go. Time to get you going. You know, so often my mind is rowing. I wake up in worship. How oh, I can't I just sleep? He goes, son, you know, I gotta help you. Let me get you going properly. Let, let's worship. I'm like, no, I wanna sleep. He goes, no, 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 I'm in your midst, son. I gotta help you. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God wants to help you. God, God wants to help you. He's in your midst. He's in your midst. You shall be that city shall that, be that shine, that shine. That to make God glad. To make God glad. So, God give you the one without sin. So you can stop sinning and stop being lawless. This is why I give you utterance in essence. You go, I don't want your words. I'm going to give you my words. I don't want your righteousness. It's like a filthy meditation. Claude, I'm going to give you mine. I don't want your wisdom. The wisdom from the earth, it's devilish. But the wisdom from heaven is peacefully. God, I'll give you my wisdom. Are you listening? He's Christ said, I give you peace, but not the peace like the world. I don't want your peace, I'll give you my peace. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Not your life, not your death, contaminated. Yeah. Amen? Parch life. A life that is supple. You're like when you're young and you look full of substance. Amen? In the name of Jesus. You never so often, my little conceited moment. It can always catch me by chance. So I'm walking by the mirror and I get a glance on myself. And I swear the person I'm seeing in the mirror is not me. And I go, man, you look young and strong and healthy. And immediately I've got to correct myself. God, that is the life of Christ. Amen. You, do you understand? Amen. The life that's coming through, it's not mine. Because I know I don't eat and sleep properly enough to get it. So how does it work it? Because it's the life of Jesus. Sometimes I say something and I go, man, that was brilliant. Immediately I gotta go, that is the wisdom of God and the utterance of God. That is that you, boy. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. You gotta catch it. And then you gotta give praise. Recognize and praise. Hallelujah. 
Sometimes I share with someone or talking to myself and I walk with it. I said, Lord, I thank you for being in the midst of me. That was awesome administration. I would have messed that up with my part self. Do you understand what I'm saying? One of your goal, you must want to give this to everybody. The Bible said many believe God is slow. But God is not slow. He just wants all to come into this place. He wants all to be a city that he's glad about. So he's waiting and calling them. He said, come, come, why is the day is open? Why salvation is available? Come in, come in out of the parched land. Get out of the pride land. Accept your finite, depend on me. That Jesus, what is the work? Does God want us to do? He said, the work I want you to do is depend on the Son of God. This is the work. He said, depend on the one who knows. Depend on the one that is sinless, that is not lawless. Depend on the one that has no trace of rebellion in him. Distrust everything else. We know Jesus is sinless forever. There's no trace of any lawlessness in it. There's no trace of any rebellion. There's no chance he ended up in the parched land where everything is dying. Remember, the reason it's called parched the sun come down and kill any sign of life. Mm. It scorches it. You ever seen the sun observe water? It observed the life out of it. This is why Satan wants you here. Amen? This is how the sinless one operates. We know you're sinless, but you need an attitude to know what does what a, what a sinless mean. The Bible said in 1 John 3, 5, he is without any sin. Well, what, what does that mean in a manifestation? What does it look like? What does the attitude of one without sin look like? We know what sin looks like. We know it leads to lawlessness, and lawlessness leads to rebellion. But what does sinlessness look like? <laughs> you need to understand this too. So when you see it, you can recognize it. Amen. How do you know when the sinless one is operating in you? Let's look and see what the attitude and the attributes are like. The Bible says in verse 30, this is Christ talking to them. Amen? I am able to do nothing from myself, independent of my own accord. What did he realize? Finite. Yes. Because in 1 John chapter 3, 5, yes, he became what? A man. Mm. Go back and study your Bible carefully. 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible said Jesus became what? A man. So which means he becomes what? Limited. Yes. He can't do nothing by himself. This is the first reason what gets us in trouble. You overestimate yourself. You develop pride and proudness. God wants you to recognize. God already knows this. He wants you to know this. The enemy encourages it. Make you become full of yourself. You know everything. Even though you didn't make the world. You didn't make the adversary. You didn't make the purpose. And you didn't make yourself. You know it. Know what? How? By what means? Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus, this is the one who came from God, who created everything, but he was created in the limitation of a man. Mm, mm. Many people go, oh Jesus, no Jesus didn't do it as God, Jesus did it as what? Man. Whoa. He was limited. This is a decreed. He said, I am able to do nothing from my, you see, myself, independent of my own accord. He said, I'm limited. Mm. Amen? Amen? But only as I am taught by God. So the only way I know what to do or how to do is when God what? Teaches me. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. You better learn this lesson or you will become careless. This is a very important lesson. As a man, Jesus did not know what to do. How to do it. Where it should be done and why and how. But he said, as God teach me, I can. Are you listening to me? This is what sinlessness is like. But only as I am taught by God... And as I get his orders, as God ordered me, go here, go there, take care of your family this way, take care of the body this way, train the soul, teach the soul this way, worship this way, preach this way, teach this way. This is how you say hello. This is how you take care of your fellow man. This is how you take care of the poor and the weak. Amen. Are you listening to me? And he teach me. Yes. The Bible says Jesus had to learn obedience. <laughs> so you don't come knowing how to be obedient. You have to what? Learn it. The Bible says he had learned obedience. Mm. You're going to have to learn how to be righteous. 
You're going to have to learn how to use wisdom. You're going to have to learn how to love, how to walk in faith, how to exercise faith, how to have mercy. Jesus is going to have to teach you quite a bit. But you need to understand you can do none of it on your own accord, independence of him. None. You're going to mess it up. And you're playing with rebellion. You're going, and this is what Satan teaches you. Oh, you don't need your mother, you don't need your father, you don't need God. Just do it. You're your own man, you're your own woman. It's a free world. Well, if you have created, you have those rights. You don't. Amen? Jesus had this kind of sinless attitude. But only as I am taught by God, and as I get his order, even as I hear, I judge. So based on what God tell him, if God said this is right, he go, okay, I deem it to be right to you. I decide as I am bid it to decide. When God said, decide it this way, he go, okay. So God go, say hello. Amen. To my brother, he go, hello, Brother Grant. As God said a thing, he just, it's called diastomos. What diastomos is? The two-edged sword. As God said, I say. Amen. As God do it, I do it. Amen. So you're always following. Amen. You're always following. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, as the voice come to me, I give a decision. And my judgment is right because God said it is right. Just righteous. Yes. Because I do not seek or consult my own will. I don't ask myself because I know I don't know nothing. Come on, you know why we ask? Because we think we know. That's why you ask yourself. And then well, we get worse than that. So we don't know nothing. So guess who I'll ask? The next person next to me that doesn't know anything. I don't know what to do, so why should I pray? Why don't I call Brother Grant and ask him? He has it a lot down. No! You call God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. We ask the next proud fool next to us. And he typically don't know better. He give us his opinion. Or he'll go, ask God or I'll pray with you. Because I don't know. Are you listening to me? You do not consult yourself or another inf a finite man. You consult the infinite God, Amen. the all-knowing God. Amen. Are you listening to me? You have to develop your relationship. If you're not sure what God said, you might look for confirmation. Mm. But I am asking confirmation for nobody who don't have a great relationship of God and nobody who didn't denounce self. Mm. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. When I, when I call someone and say, I'm praying this, but I can't tell what God is saying, I always call someone that distrusts what? Themselves. Amen. Someone who do not consult themselves. That is the person I will call and go, can you help me look into something? I'm praying for something. I would like some confirmation. The Bible says everything must be established, meaning should it be done by two or three? Witness. Yes. I don't care what nobody, one person say. I want two to three people to say what? The same thing. And I only want people who have got off what? Their self. Amen. Because one of the number one specialty of the finite being, finite being, they are full of what? Opinion. Amen. They have an opinion for everything and anything. You ask them anything. Tell me about the son. The son? Oh, let me tell you about the son. Tell me about brother. Oh, oh, I can tell you about him. Tell me about others. Okay, I'll tell you about car. Do you have a car? No. But I have an opinion about a car. <laughs> tell me about Mac. Okay, I'll tell you about Mac. Have you ever had a computer? No. Do you know what a computer is? No, but I have opinions. Sorry, <laughs> I read the Reader's Digest. You know, you know, I imagine it has to be this way. But how did you imagine? Well, I have my imaginary faculty. So I'll come up with something. Those people terrify me. I'm afraid of them. I am literally afraid of them. Yeah, exactly. You see, I want someone when they ask me, they go, I do not know, but I will consult the Lord. Mm -hmm. This, this tells me about a person. Sometimes I'm weighing someone. It tells me, do they trust themselves or do they trust God? Amen? Are they careful not to fall into lawlessness and lead to rebellion or not? Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Satan, I always try to encourage you. You know. You got it on lockdown. Mm -hmm. You're the smartest person after all in the world. Everybody else is a fool. You're right, everyone's wrong. Yeah, everyone is wrong. <laughs> or, or he loved it. You are special. 
You are unique. Oh, yeah, you no, you are created in God image just like everybody else. Nothing else. So Jesus go, and my judgment is right just because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself because I can't trust myself. Why can't I trust myself? I am finite. You guys understand that word, what it means, right? Limited. I don't see much, don't understand much, don't know much. And if you have the nerve to ask me why, then create the world, don't understand how it works. Then create me, hardly get me. Then create the purpose for none of it. Then create the adversary. So how can I know why you're asking me? Amen? My own aim, he said, I don't consult myself, my own aim, I have no desire. My own purposes doesn't come, but only the will and the pleasure of the Father who sent me. A sinless one is not interested in their desire. They're not interested in their limitations. They're only interested in the will of God. And when Christ put his sinless nature in you, you no longer concern you. You no longer consult yourself or those who consult themselves. You're only focused on the will of the Lord. You're only focused on what God wants. And how God look at a thing. And how God judge a thing. And how God weigh a thing. And what God is concerned. And God purposes. Amen. Are you listening to me? Your opinion tremendously decrease till they come to naught. Mm. Your wisdom come to naught. Your judgment come to naught. Mm. You become very watching a lot. And you pray a lot. Mm -hmm. You become watchful and prayerful. Amen. When you're op opinionated and or opinionful, <laughs> it's because you're not watchful. Yes. You can't do both. Yes, yes. You can't be full of opinion and watchful at the same time. It doesn't work. Amen. Do you understand me? Yeah. You see? People try to set me up out of them. Pastor Fraser, you're a man of God. You know lots. Tell me about this. I'm like, am I God? I do not know about this, what this is. But I can pray about this for you. And you should pray too. They try to set me up. Don't. But I've heard you talk. I'm like, that was that moment God was helping me. But I'd help him useless, utterly useless. Do you understand me? Tell me some things, if I know anything. So, no, 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 no. Please don't set me up. Amen? So this is what a sinless characteristic is like. It does not desire what gets you in trouble. You overuse or overestimate your finite limitation. Notice Jesus became a man and how he viewed himself. He said, I don't trust, I don't consult myself. I know I don't know nothing. He was never confused. As a result, he's never susceptible to lawlessness. He's never susceptible to what? To rebellion. Because when you know, you will want to do your own will because you know. You won't consult God, you'll consult yourself. And you'll be interested in God's will, you'll be interested in your will. You won't be interested in God's judgment, can you ever be interested in? Your judgment because you are right, you know. Are you listening to me? If you catch this trick, you'll catch prayer. You'll understand the mystery of it. You'll pray a lot. Because every day life will show you you don't know what. Anything. I believe life just embarrasses us. Every day there's a situation, there's a person, there's a thing, you're on your knees. They go, man, why do you pray so much? Man, life is showing me up every day. It is showing me I'm utterly useless when you come to know it. Do you understand this? Then you will let your life go. Christ said those who lose their life will find their life. Then you will gain Christ's life and Christ's wisdom and Christ's peace and Christ's judgment and Christ's truth and Christ's faithfulness. You'll become soft. See, what, what makes us hard and crusty is your perspective and your outlook you think you know. When you're in a student, when you feel like you don't know, you're gentle. Because you know at any time, you can look like an utter fool. So there's a gentleness there. Does this make sense? When you think you know, there's a hardness. I got this. Everybody better recognize I know something. Everybody better listen when I talk. Run from such people. They're utterly fool. They're either in the parks line or on their way. You'll watch them come down. Amen? 
for those that are meek and gentle, because they understand they are limited. Stay close. Stay close. These are the sinless traits of one without sin, what became a man. Go back and study John 5.30 so you understand those attributes. So when you don't see them, pray immediately. Lord, I'm trying to rebel. Lord, I'm trying to be lawless. Lord, I'm sitting left, right, and center because I'm consulting my own ideas. The more you consult your ideas, the more mistake you'll make. Do you understand? The more you, like Eve, the more judgment you make on your own, the more you'll mess it up. Does this make sense? I feel Lord to get you off of self. If you stay on self, you'll keep making mistakes. If you keep making mistakes, you'll keep feeling guilty. The only way to get off the guilt, then you'll have to adopt an attitude of lawlessness. I don't care. The way to stop feeling guilty is stop making mistakes. But that can only happen if you get God judgment in situation, circumstance, and condition. If God is making a decision in every situation, you will stop feeling guilty because you won't make many mistakes. So as a result, you won't have to adapt the attitude because you're feeling bad. Why a lot of people adapt that attitude? They feel so guilty all the time. They think, oh, there's a way to deal with it. Just go, I don't care. Just stop caring what people think, what God think, you know, who you hurt. Just stop caring. And once they do that, then they'll enter lawlessness and underway to rebellion. But it comes, it, it's the foreshadow. You know, it comes because you are self-reliant. This is what creates that problem. You renounce self. There's no need to create the guilt to make you enter where you don't care lawlessness. Yeah. You're, hard, you're tempted to harden your heart at that point. Correct. Because you just can't live with it. Right. Or some people, in order, they they. they they, they don't want to, don't care. So what they'll do, they'll go, I am just a disaster. I hate myself. I don't care. They'll kill themselves or something. Yeah. Or this is where people stop and they start cutting themselves, etc. They go, I so hate myself. I, everything I touch becomes a disaster. Everything becomes a disaster because you're finite. Because God is not leading you. So they either hate themselves and check out, or they don't care. Mm -hmm. The problem is self. The, 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 they don't know how to deal with the pain. Correct. Mm -hmm. You either accept God's atonement, but then you're still going to make mistakes because the atonement only takes care of the effect, Sorry. not the one who keeps making a mistake. Or you'll harden your heart, take drugs. Bottom line, you're trying to alleviate the pain. Mm -hmm. And that's this is where Satan, because you're in a desperate place then. This yes. is, this, that's why the first defense is always the blood. Correct. Mm -hmm. But you can't stop there or else you'll never change. Mm 